From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 5.30, streaming now. Now at 5.30, Christmas was three weeks ago, but some people are still waiting for deliveries. We're asking the Postal Service why. And creative cuisine, these culinary delights feature popular cookies as the main ingredient. Chris. Topping our lineup, stadiums are opening as COVID vaccine sites. And now there's a push to make hotels the next spot where you could get a shot. Now demand for at-home test kits has spikes. When you talk about things like cholesterol, cancer, vitamin deficiencies, well, I'll tell you what doctors say you need to know though before you buy one. And we're taking a step back from politics and COVID to celebrate a truly positive milestone, the event this weekend that you can be part of to honor the first shelter pet to make it to the White House. And today it is all about location. If you're driving along I-69 in the Fishers area, dealing with some snow, same for you on 465 on the east side of the city, but you can see there downtown right now, it is dry. We've got some low clouds around and continuing with the snow showers that has a little more of a feature to more like a spring shower, very scattered here. They move through and then they dry out pretty quick. You can see though some of that snow shower activity through portions of Hamilton County, east side of the city, and then as we get around down Avon Danville down into Plainfield. We've got a few snow showers that continues into Crawfordsville as well. A little bit of a rain snow mix for you in the Bedford area. We can see a drop in visibility and it can happen very quickly. Right now visibility not too bad about five miles or better. As we look at Truecast through the next several hours we will start to see these snow showers winding down here but still keep a few in the forecast through tonight. You can see the low clouds and some scattered snow showers around Bloomington with temperatures that right now are in the middle 30s. Here's a look at your evening planning forecast. We'll continue with some scattered snow showers. Temperatures in the 30s through 10. And first at 530, shipping delays continue for many U.S. Postal Service customers. It's a problem we first told you about around the holidays, but now several weeks later, some packages are still stuck in transit. WRTV's Megan Sanctorum spoke with one customer about the delays and is working to get answers from the Postal Service. Sherry Worley paid more than $50 to mail a package here at the Southport Post Office. That was back on December 30th. Now online tracking only telling her it's still in transit. Generally, you know, when you mail something with the post office, you expect it to get there in pretty fair time. But that hasn't been the case lately for some USPS customers like Sherry Worley and her husband. They had told him when he shipped it that it was taking longer than normal, you know, because of all the volume they're dealing with. I understand that. I figured, you know, a few extra days. Those few extra days have now turned in two weeks. I was a postal employee. My husband's retired post office. You know, we stand up for the post office, but of late, that's getting harder to do. And she's wondering if the $300 worth of golf equipment she mailed to someone in Pennsylvania will ever get there. Yeah, we're frustrated. It's a problem we've heard about over and over again. On the 9th, I dropped off eight packages and they were never even scanned in. You can't get your packages back and you have no idea where they might be. Back in December, the post office released a statement saying they were experiencing a higher shipping volume than normal and staffing issues due to the pandemic. So we asked them again today. A representative only responding by saying anyone with issues should contact customer service. No, I don't think they're doing enough. Uh, Christmas has been over for two weeks, three weeks now. He says, I will never ship with the post office again. But he's pretty, you know, pretty frustrated by this. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, WRTV. Rowley says a representative with the Postal Service told her the package is sitting in a warehouse in Indianapolis, but they were unable to provide any additional information. We also asked what is causing the delays now and when people can expect shipping times to return to normal, but we have not yet gotten a response. Chris. The news feed starts with President-elect Biden picking more leaders for his administration. He is nominating New York Emergency Department head Deanne Criswell to serve as the head of FEMA. Former CIA Deputy Director David Cohen will return to the job as well. Now, today, the U.S. military did meet a goal of having fewer troops in Afghanistan. About 2,500 still remain in the country. The Trump administration made a deal with the Taliban to remove all, us, all U.S. military personnel from the country by May. Well, vaccine makers are still learning just how long their medicine will be able to help. Moderna now offering a third shot to people who took part in its clinical trial. Now, it's unclear whether the additional boosters will be needed beyond the two shots of the vaccine being offered right now.
Cancer patients are especially vulnerable to coronavirus, but because there isn't a lot known about how COVID vaccines affect cancer patients, some may be hesitant to get it. Only a handful of patients with cancer were included in clinical trials, partly because the goal was to get the vaccine approved as quickly as possible, and also because of the substantial risk of severe symptoms from COVID. However, doctors say there isn't any data to suggest that there would be serious side effects from the vaccine itself. It is not believed that cancer patients are going to have any increased risk of these types of complications. And I think most importantly, there's no data that we would anticipate that cancer patients would do worse in terms of their cancer outcomes after being vaccinated. The only questions right now are over how robust of a response will the immune system have. Doctors emphasize that any protection is still better than none, especially in cancer patients who have weaker immune systems. So it is strongly recommended they get vaccinated, but it's important to talk to their providers first to see if there is any reason that they should not get the shot. Also, is there a specific time during a month of treatment, for example, that are better than others to be vaccinated? So we know that certain chemotherapies might suppress somebody's immune system and therefore they might not be able to have as good a response to a vaccine. Cancer patients will soon be eligible for vaccine trials as well as other populations like children and pregnant women. But more in our lineup, stadiums are opening as COVID vaccination sites. Now hotels still struggling with travel not happening because of COVID could be the latest place opening for vaccinations as well. We're gonna take a look at the plan to make that happen. Only at Hardee's. Possibly the largest vaccination site in the country is now up and running. Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles opened today to give people COVID-19 vaccines drive through style. Right now, it's still limited to who can get the vaccine there, but eventually city leaders say they can vaccinate as many as 12,000 people a day. L.A. County does have more COVID deaths than any other county in America. Hotels across the country are sitting empty as this pandemic continues, and it's not just tourists that helped business before COVID. It was also large conferences and conventions. And now that those are on pause, the hotel industry wants to help with vaccination efforts. The American Hotel and Lodging Association says it wants to convert thousands of hotels across the country into COVID vaccination sites. Uh, our industry has been hurt uh, really worse than just about anybody. We're right there with restaurants and, and, and live performance venues. And if this vaccination is successfully rolled out, the quicker that happens, the better it is for everybody. In a letter to the Biden-Harris transition team, the association points out that more than 50,000 hotels in the country have refrigeration for the vaccine as well as 24-hour operations. Now, its CEO adds that hotels have workers who are ready to help and some convention rooms have the ability to welcome thousands of people. Um, you have the infrastructure that is already there. Um, location, which is already there, the parking, which is already there, uh, willing and able team members to help uh, make sure that everything is set up. Um, you have rooms that can be used, uh, sleeping rooms that can be used by medical professionals who need to stay overnight. Rogers says there will be some hotels that are not equipped to become vaccination sites. The best candidates for this task will be hotels and urban centers that are larger. Now, still ahead in our lineup, demand for at-home testing kits has spiked for things like cholesterol, cancer, and vitamin deficiencies. What doctors say you need to know before you use them. Only at Ashley Home Store. Let's start the newsfeed. For the first time in more than five years, gas mileage dropped and pollution increased for new cars. The government report points to a shift away from energy efficient vehicles as the Trump administration rolled back standards that were put in place by President Obama. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos planning to put people into space in just a couple of months. His private space company, Blue Origin, may be able to get a crew into space by early April. The company's in the middle of test flights right now. Now the holidays, were not enough to boost retail in the pandemic. U.S. retail sales fell in December, third straight month they went down. Economists say just another sign the U.S. economy is slowing down. But when you make little more than tips in a shift, it can be tough to support yourself. Service workers are trying to make ends meet. And as we continue our series, asking different people a very important question, how are you doing? Dan Grossman found the answers from this group of hardworking people might surprise you. For some, these feel like impossible times. 
definitely been tough. Cal Milligan is a waitress at a brunch spot that despite its open sign, resembles very little of the restaurant she used to know. I mean, with server wage, we're really not making anything other than tips. So when it's really slow, we don't really have a very reliable income. On this day, she gets a $10 tip, a reason for celebration before she packs up and goes to her next job as a dental assistant. Both are part time. Well, I thought it was going to be like on a boat somewhere saving the sea turtles using my degree, but here I am. <laughs> and both are a far departure from what she thought she'd be doing with her degree in marine biology. But this year, I'm just sort of trying to be as frugal as possible until I go into my next gig. It's simply about making ends meet. It was extremely stressful. I mean, I would come home some days and just cry. Laura Bugatti lost her job at a brewery in the spring and has been trying to look for reliable work since. She moved in with her mom as she tries to save and find a place of her own. It was a really rough year, but it's hopefully going to turn around and I'm just keeping hope for that. This is the life of a service worker. Scrappy, difficult, exposed to uncertainty and more. I feel like work from home people don't understand that same risk and they're just like, oh, like if they get sick, they get sick. It doesn't really affect anything for them. But for me, that would be two weeks of no pay, which would be very significant. Given the circumstances, these might feel like impossible times. But when you ask these women how they are doing, <laughs> oh God, I'm just happy to be employed. They look past their circumstance and reply with gratitude. How would you say you're doing? Thanks for asking. I am OK, definitely. It was a rough year. Um, a lot of ups and downs, but I'm I'm just one of the lucky ones that has a family to fall back on to when I'm struggling. I'm Dan Grossman. The Girl Scouts are preparing for their annual cookie sale campaign. You can already order online if you know a scout. One group has reinvented your favorite treats with some new recipes. WRTV's Rafael Sanchez reports on the creativity, the cooking, and the cool confections. <laughs> this is a dream. This is what happens to Girl Scout cookies that you can't buy. Oh, big bite right there. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thin mints, Samoas, dosi dos, and others that accidentally arrive in opened or dented boxes are not sold to the public and usually are donated to food pantries. But in this case, the Girl Scouts of Southern Johnson County use some of their unsold cookies for a creative culinary contest. While in COVID, watching all the Food Network shows and all the DIYs, I thought, well, why don't we do a bake-off? Troop members and their parents were given one random package of cookies, and they had to come up with a delightful dessert. We've got cakes. We've got cupcakes. This could be in a Girl Scout cookie box. Some judges tasted creations they believe should be on an order form one day, like this moon pie cookie. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I'm coming back next year. A new twist on treats that totally leapfrogged in a new direction of cookie cuisine. Yeah. Sometimes at one o'clock in the morning. Mm. <laughs> Dude, off the charts, man. Incredible. I wish I had that story assignment. Raphael says the Girl Scouts of Johnson County plan to make a cookbook from all the new recipes and sell the book as a fundraiser. Kyle, I would definitely buy that. <laughs> I could go for some cookies, a little hot chocolate. That now sounds that great. Those temperatures are tumbling down, and we've had a few snow showers out there. You had some of those earlier today in Greencastle, actually coated the rooftops there, but it has quickly melted away as we've had temperatures just above the freezing mark. We sit at 32 degrees downtown, still 39 though in Bloomington and 35 in Lafayette. Scattered snow showers, again, any accumulations will be minimal, but now that the sun is going down, I think we may see those snow showers accumulate just a little bit more. 27 degrees will be the overnight temperature with those mostly cloudy skies. We'll continue with a few of the snow showers, but it kind of winds down as we go into the first half of our Saturday. This is true cast though, as we get to two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, you see more of those snow showers developing across the western portion of the state and again like today could reduce visibility and make some areas a little bit slick temporarily and temperatures will be just a bit colder but again accumulations should be minimal we go into tomorrow night and once again the snow shower activity kind of winds down so here's a look at those temperatures tomorrow 28 degrees here at 8 a.m. will be mostly dry as we go through the first half of the day and then into the afternoon with scattered snow showers we're in the middle 30s for your afternoon high so pretty seasonal out there 
We're going to keep this active pattern going though into Sunday afternoon. Kind of a repeat forecast here as we go through the second half of the weekend with some of those scattered, <clears throat> excuse me, scattered snow showers. But there you can see all the way through the weekend we're talking about maybe a half inch or a little bit more, but a lot of that's going to be melting. So I don't think we'll ever see more than a half inch on the ground at any one time. Seven day planning forecast things calming down a little bit next week. We'll be back into the 40s by Thursday. From cancer screenings to cholesterol checks, demand for at-home testing kits has spiked during the pandemic. Amanda Brandeis looks at which tests are being sought out and what customers buying them should know as we work to stay healthy and safe. From online shopping to food on demand, industries built for convenience became essential as cities shut down. Healthcare was no different. The COVID-19 pandemic has supercharged the market for at-home testing. Derek Newell is president of Let's Get Checked. With over 30 types of at-home testing kits, they were ready to help fill the gap. People still need to get care and people need to get testing. He says more people are discovering the range of tests that can be delivered to your doorstep. The tests that we've seen the most growth in are those related to condition management like colorectal cancer screening as well as cholesterol and thyroid tests the kids come with how-to videos like this one the company shared with us your sample collection kit provide people very easy to follow instructions customers send their sample to a lab and get results within days if you have an abnormal result let's get checked clinicians will call you let's get checks as combined with their at-home covid test demand is up more than 800 percent Another company, Everlywell, is also reporting massive growth, noting spikes in fertility, heart health, and vitamin deficiency tests. Access is important. People are not excited about going into the doctor's office. Newell says their non-COVID test kits are FDA cleared and approved and processed in certified labs. They cost between $49 and $349. We analyzed over 10,000 results with the FDA and convinced them that these tests including the human error, were as accurate as a test that would be done in the physician's office. Laboratory tests are complicated artifacts. Dr. Sheldon Campbell is a professor of laboratory medicine at Yale. He says while at-home testing can improve access to health care, he has concerns with the growing trend. So a test that's ordered on somebody that doesn't need it is not only wasteful, but it also is potentially dangerous because um, a false positive test can lead you in, away from the true diagnosis. He sees some value in categories like STDs, which carry a stigma. But Campbell believes many conditions are best diagnosed by your doctor. Knows you, knows your medical history, and can put your new illness in the context of what you've got going on beforehand. He says results taken out of context could lead to unnecessary additional testing and treatment and real problems could be missed. Yeah, but Newell points out human error can also happen in a doctor's office and believes convenience will drive the future of health care. I'm Amanda Brandeis reporting. Amanda, thank you. The news feed starts with the amount of COVID patients in the hospital going down. The number of cases across the country is still high, standing at around 200,000. More than 3,700 people died from coronavirus on Thursday alone. Coronavirus is expected to have an impact on U.S. life expectancy. A new study says the pandemic will take more than a year off U.S. life expectancy. Average Americans will live 1.13 years less. President-elect Biden putting the former head of the FDA in charge of COVID vaccine response in the United States. Dr. David Kessler led the FDA back in the 90s. He'll be in charge of the new administration's efforts to put 100 million shots into people in the first 100 days in office. Well, more people are wearing masks and social distancing now, but there are concerns that we're still not doing a good enough job with health recommendations to stop the spread of coronavirus. Those are the findings of the latest report from the COVID States Project National Survey. The number of people wearing masks is at an all time high now at about 80%. That's according to the survey. Social distancing behaviors have also increased substantially since October, but they're still far below what we saw in April and frequent hand washing is also down from the spring. All right, finally in our lineup, we are taking a step back from the politics and back from COVID to celebrate a truly positive milestone, the event this weekend that you can be part of to honor the first shelter pet to make it to the White House. At Value City Furniture. 
We want to take a moment to recognize the new animals moving into the White House. The Biden's German Shepherds, Major and Champ. They may look like guard dogs, but Major's life in particular didn't start out very heroic. He came into the Delaware Humane Association, part of a very sick litter of puppies. The Bidens adopted him in 2018, making him the first dog to go from shelter to the White House. That really is a monumental moment, and it's it's a big deal for not just people who work in the animal advocacy world, but for folks who love animals everywhere, especially if they have a shelter vet. The Delaware Humane Association says Major's story has encouraged shelter adoption. They, like many animal facilities, had to quickly pivot last spring and turn to foster and virtual adoptions. Those skyrocketed for them. They were able to adopt out even more animals despite COVID than they had in previous years. Major's story also helps break stereotypes about shelter pets like they're all pit bulls or sick or broken. Mostly, they're just scared. No matter how clean and accommodating a shelter can be, there's other animals there and there's other, you know, there's sick animals there. Sometimes there's people coming in and out of the facilities. It can become overwhelming and stressful for animals. So by eliminating that and putting them into a foster home, they're able to really de-stress, get healthy, uh, kind of come out of their shell. The Delaware Humane Association and sponsors are hosting an in-doggeration party over Zoom this Sunday to celebrate major. It's a fundraiser for the shelter, so it's $10 for anyone to join. You can register and find more information on DelawareHumane.org. Well, it's a sport that might look familiar, but it's just a little bit different. This tennis-like game is seeing its popularity surge during the pandemic. Being outside all winter makes the winters go really quickly. That's always good. On Monday, we will tell you just what this sport is and why it's attractive to so many people right now. We've made it to the weekend. The forecast not going to change a whole lot, though, between Saturday and Sunday. We'll start off dry and then some snow showers through the afternoon with highs in the 30s. The news at 6 starts now.